under certain conditions, reflected light can take on all sorts of interesting qualities. <laughs> Going, Bertram. Uh, invigorating as usual. I thought this class would never end. Sorry. It's okay. Bertram. So I see you worked up quite a sweat in gym class today. Pardon me while I laugh, Dalton. Ha uh ha. -huh. What's her name? Louise Baker. I'm in love. Does she know you're alive? suppose you've tried anything outrageous or daring like talking to her. Do you think I'm crazy? It's better than spending all your time gawking at her. Look, just because I'm in love with her doesn't mean she has to know. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Who says it takes two people to be in love? 
Bertram, watch out for that. <laughs> that Bertram Cummings. I wouldn't be caught dead with a nerd like that. I don't know. He seems kind of nice. Looks like he combs his hair with an egg beater. <laughs> <laughs> You got some points for being a genius. Did you find that Phillips yet? Find it yet? It would be easy to find a needle in a haystack around here. Right next to that microchip. Well, Dr. Frankenstein, is it almost ready yet? Just a few more adjustments, and I will be ready to show it. I can't believe nobody else knows you're working on this. Just Mr. Barnes. He's the only one who understands what I'm doing anyways. Want to see how it works? Yeah, of course. OK, go downstairs to my mom's room and turn on her TV set. Any channel. But whatever you do, don't let her see it. This is Battleship Bertram calling Destroyer Dalton. Do you copy? Loud and, loud and clear. I can do this to any TV in the neighborhood. Unbelievable. Come on back up. I'll show you how it works. Come on. Bertram, it's fantastic. I can do it to a lot of sets at once, so just one at a time. You mean on that computer there? It's just a matter of honing in on the right frequency. See, this is our street. Here's your house, and here's Louise's. I was thinking of broadcasting to Louise's TV real late at night, maybe while she's sleeping. You love Bertram. Bertram's the only man for you. You love Bertram. Who could love anyone with a name like Bertram? The problem is my name, Bertram. Bertram isn't a name. Dave, now there's a name, or Brad, or Jack. See, if my name were Jack, it'd make all the difference in the world. People would walk by and say, hi, Jack. Hi, Dolphin. Hi, Doris. Hi. See? And if I were taller, you know, not a lot taller, just tall enough to be able to look people in the eye instead of in the throat. Dalton! Hey, Bob, how's it going? Right. I don't know, I guess what I'm really saying is I want to be noticed. To have people like me, I think I'm terrific and stuff. I like you. Swell, except I don't want to date you. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Well, there she is. You really think I should go up there and introduce myself? Just like that? It's worked for hundreds of years. Don't you think it would be better to say, send candy? OK. Can I borrow your comb? Unbelievable. Look at that jerk. What an idiot. Hi. Hi. Um, well, goodbye. OK, Bertram, now the next step is to tell her your name. Let me give you a hand. Starts with the same letter as bird brain. <laughs> so you think you've seen a UFO, Mike? Are you kidding? Absolutely. When was this? It was about a week ago, and I'm serious. I was outside riding my bike. I looked up and saw it. It was incredible. It was perfectly round, saucer-shaped. It was moving really fast, cutting right turns, cutting back again. I couldn't believe it. What did it finally do? Well, I rode home to tell my pop about it, but by the time I got there, it was just gone. Like, 
it just disappeared. So then you do believe in life on other planets and that we are being visited. Are you kidding? Absolutely. Let's get another point of view on this. Bertram, what do you think? About what Mike says he saw? Yes. Well, when you're looking at something like this, you have to take into consideration all the factors. What do you think? I don't know what I saw. I didn't say that. What I meant was, well, for instance, was it last Wednesday by any chance? Yeah. And it was cloudy that night? Yeah, sort of saw it through the clouds. Hmm. I saw the same thing. There. See, I told you. Didn't I tell you to quit hitting me? It was the spotlight from the grand opening of Honest Don's used car lot bouncing off the clouds. Wait a minute, Bertram. Are you telling me I don't know the difference between a spotlight and a flying saucer? Bertram, perhaps you could diagram it for us. Excuse me. I need a new piece of chalk. Under certain conditions, reflected light can take on all sorts of interesting qualities. Bertram Cummings. We have a couple of classes together. Mm, yeah. Chemistry, biology. Nah, I don't like those sciences as much myself. Uh, I was wondering if, I don't know, if maybe you'd like to go out to a movie this weekend? You're busy this weekend? everything right. Of course I did. You don't think I'm dumb, do you? No comment. Look, I copied your handwriting perfectly. All right, Arin. You quit talking so much, go see if the coast is clear. We're gonna show that nerd. Maybe I should just enter a monastery. Maybe you should give it another try. Look, Dalton, I'm telling you, I scare the girl. She backs away in fear Bart whenever coming. I... Louise is not the only girl in the ninth grade. I'm not even gonna think about her. If she doesn't want me, it's her loss. You got the perfume? Right here, I stole it from my sister. <laughs> that nerd thinks he's so smart. Just wait till he reads this. Let's get out of here. From now on, let's go out to a movie. 
let's not even bring up what's her name. Now you've got it. And there are lots of fish in the sea. That's a spurred. Dalton, you aren't by any chance wearing perfume? No. It's in your locker, dummy. I suppose that means it's for me. Dear Bertram, I'm really sorry about the other day. For weeks now, I've been waiting for you to come and talk to me. And that stupid Mike Goaty had to go and ruin it all. What I'm trying to say is, I have a terrible crush on you. Could we have one more chance? Tomorrow morning before homeroom? With much anticipation, Louise Baker. I knew she'd come through. Bertram, I really think this is overdoing it. What do you mean, overdoing it? I mean, dressing up like this. I'm not dressing up. I'm just taking a little time to get ready, is all. It's now 7 p.m. Your meeting with Louise is exactly 13 hours away. <sighs> okay, now, Dalton. I want your honest opinion on this. Oh, no. You don't like it? Looks like you're hosting a telethon. You don't think Louise will like it? Maybe. If it doesn't blind her first. Why don't you just try meeting her as yourself? But I thought you wanted me to get the girl. I always wondered who bought clothes like that. Come on, Bertram, I've got to go. Are those really your clothes? Yeah, why? I changed my mind. Maybe you better meet her as someone else. All right. Since you know so much about girls, tell me what you'd do. I don't know. Why don't you sing to her? Serenade her. Girls always go for that sort of thing. At least in the movies they do. Anyways, I gotta go. Hmm. It's audacious. But I like it. Thanks. I'll see you in the morning. Bye. Do re. Bonjour. What do you think? If she loves you, she'll overlook it. What's with the hat and cane? Ever hear this fellow Maurice Chevrolet? You mean Chevalier? That's the guy. Oh, no. No. I assume no responsibility for this, Bertram. Why, Bertram, you've changed. Yes, and, well, here I am. Yes. Here you are. Don't be nervous. It's perfectly all right. I understand. Yes, except... I'm not sure I do. Maybe... Maybe I can put it to you a different way. Every little breeze seems to whisper Louise. Birds in the trees seem to twitter Louise. Each little rose tells me it knows I love you, Louise. Every little beat that I hear. Every little beat that I feel in my heart. <laughs> Look at that. Like a work of art. Each little sigh tells me that I adore you, Louise. Just to see and hear you. 
his joy I never uh, These are my backup singers Boys, uh, you forgot to wear your sequins today <laughs> uh. He's the life of the party Very funny, jerk Dear Bertram, I'm really sorry about the other day I've been waiting for weeks now for you to come and talk to me, but that stupid Mike Goaty had to go and ruin it all. What I'm trying to say is I have a terrible crush on you. That was the last straw. Will you be quiet? I'm taking this stupid costume off. Shh. I've had it with being the fool, the nerd everyone laughs at, the dupe of every joke. I've had it with people who think they can run all over me. Just get a grip on yourself. She laughed at me, Dalton. She's just like the rest of you. Shh. She didn't have anything to do with it. But she laughed at me. She laughed, Dalton. Look, you're just blowing this whole thing out of proportion. Just because Mike and those jerks think you're a nerd doesn't mean you are one. I've been pushed right over the edge. They want to play ball with Bertram? Well, they're going to see how well I can play. Nobody makes a fool out of Bertram Cummings. <laughs> You're kidding me. His underwear? <laughs> we really showed that nerd, didn't we? Uh, Dennis, let me call you back, all right? The TV's acting kind of strange. Right. Bye. Michael Gori, I am non of Zetna. Greetings. Unfortunately, I cannot communicate with or see you, but my message is urgent. I'm losing my Repeat, mind. My message is urgent. Fading will contact you later. No, Mom, I haven't. Really? <laughs>